Hi, I'm David. I'd like to share with you a, a nice illustration, an interesting one about self-esteem. So many of us have uh, troubles with how we feel about ourselves and how we interact with one another. When I was in graduate school many, many years ago, I found an illustration called the Johari Window. Uh, it's spelled J-O-H-A-R-I. Now, at first I thought it was something out of Eastern mysticism, so I wasn't sure that I wanted to incorporate it into my philosophy. Actually, in 1955, two psychologists, one named Joe Ingham and the other one named Harry Luft, de de devised what is known as a Johari window. What they said is that we have divided our lives into four different window panes, that we live in the world of self and others, and as we interact with these other people, there is part of who we are that we can keep out in the open, but there's also part of ourselves that we choose to hide from other people. Not only that, they tell us that we all have blind spots. Other people can see some things in our personality and who we are that we can't see ourselves. And what happens is we can see everything this side of the line, but we can't see anything this side of the line. And we show people everything above the line, but we don't show them anything below the line. So by definition, this last window pane here is unknown to both us and to other people. Now, I knew this made sense. I knew that I have blind spots and I know there parts of who I am that I hide from other people. When I really started studying it and thinking about it, I started asking a, a, what I thought was a pretty serious question. Was there ever a time that I looked like this without the window pane effect? Was there ever a time in my existence when I may have looked something like this? Now, these aren't little crosses to bear, by the way. These are what I call created capacities, capacities that God, when he designed me, put these into my life, and, and he created me to live a full and, 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 and complete life. As a matter of fact, what Jesus said is, I have come that you can have a full and an abundant life. So, but what happens is we are brought into this world of self and others. And as we interact with these other people, they have good intentions. Sometimes they're our parents, our preachers, our teachers. But what they will say to us is, uh, it's okay to let this show, it's okay to let this show, and this one, and this one. Ah, uh, but don't show this, don't show this, don't show this, don't show this attribute. At the same time, what they tell us is, why don't you be this way, or this way, or this way, or this way? And I think at some point in life, what we do is we, kind of, we do step back and we say to ourselves, it seems like these people are telling me that I can keep these things in the open, but that I do indeed have to hide these things. Think about Adam and Eve in the garden. Before the original sin, what happened is they were living that full and meaningful life. They were naked and they weren't ashamed with one another. Another came into their existence and convinced them there was something that they had to hide. And that same problem has been vexing all of us human beings ever since. Well, not only do we keep things open and do we hide things, but, and by the way, if this is um, what I'm going to call the authentic self, this is who God made me to be. If, if, I'm, supposed, if I'm supposed to hide part of these and things and be these things instead, what happens is that I become someone largely other than who God made me to be. And what happens in my life is I start living out of this existence rather than out of this existence. And it's, and it's a, a shame because what, what this part is beautifully and wonderfully made. An amazing thing in Scripture, if we think of three or four just simple Scripture references, first of all, in the first two chapters of Genesis, when God made the heavens and the earth and plants and trees and animals, he said, these are good. But when he made man, there is a change in the language that says very good. The other thing in the 139th Psalm, the psalmist tells us that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. There is something absolutely beautiful about how we're made. The real kicker for me was when I read and really understood what God was saying in Jeremiah 1.5. God was getting ready to call Jeremiah to be his prophet. You know, what we th I think we know about Jeremiah is that he was a pretty young man, maybe not a dynamic leader, maybe even a bit of a wallflower, as it were. 
God is getting ready to call him to be his prophet, and God understands that Jeremiah is going to object, which, by the way, he does. But God tells Jeremiah right here in this, even before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you, and I set you apart and consecrated for you for this task of being my prophet. Well, Jeremiah did object, but he wound up being one of the most beautiful and most, most powerful prophets of Scripture. What God was telling Jeremiah is even before the sperm and the egg met in his mother's womb, he had identity. Now, where did that identity reside? Who's talking? God is talking to Jeremiah, and he says, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And what that tells me is that each one of us, Jeremiah and all of us, Paul said the same thing about him. Jesus made reference to it as well, that all of us have this wonderful creative capacity that is God-inspired and God-given even before we were made in our mother's womb. So what I what I'd like for you to think about doing is to realize that there is more to you than how you're living. As a matter of fact, I think sometimes the, the source of depression is that this part of us right here was designed to be and to be lived as fully as it possibly could be. But we restrict ourselves from living this way because we're spending so much time living this way that we don't ever do this. And this is the part of us that is depressed. So what I think what we need to do is, first of all, acknowledge these things that are open about us. Uh, what are the things that we can show to other people that are true about us, about the way God made us, that we can admit to ourselves as well? Well, then also, what are some of the things that we have learned that we've had to hide from other people? Now, these are things that are true and holy and wonderful about us. Some people will say, well, I hide this sin or I hide this sin. Well, the truth of the matter is this is not sinful here. This is, as a matter of fact, probably more where sin resides. I've had numbers of my clients who are even in, oh, for example, in very, very honorable vocations who know that they're supposed to be in this vocation have known it for a long, long, long time in their life, but they chose this instead because of the influence of other people. And they have told me that even though it's an honorable profession, for them to be in this profession is a sin. They need to be here because this is a departure from the way God made them. And this is how God made them. So let's move this line virtually down to here so now that we are this much more open. And, in, and perhaps we can eliminate this part of who we've become. The next step, I think, is really kind of a cool one. If we will accept some on one or two of our blind spots. Uh, this is sometimes what other people who are trusted people do see in us. Maybe you've had somebody say, gosh, I've seen this in you. Why don't you let it show more? And your tendency is, oh, no, 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 that's not part of who I am. But if it truly is part of who God made you and you can move this line this way, you are now this much more open as well. And then maybe you can eliminate some of this. One of the neatest things happens here with people through the years who have worked this program that, that, that's happened to them time after time after time. What we've done is we've created something that has this little notch in it and we're a little bit out of balance. Now, if we remember when God created the heavens and the earth and in the creation story, everything was beautifully balanced. And if we didn't pollute the air and the water, God's world would still be beautifully balanced. Well, we've created something that's out of balance, but what God says is let me show you something that is, has been unknown to you and to other people for a long time. And so many people have said, gosh, David, that just knocked off my socks. It was just something that really was neat to learn about who God made me to be. The other thing that I have had people do is they've gone two and three times trying to grow more and more and more in this direction. Now, there's a beautiful passage in Scripture in the third chapter of Philippians. I want you to pick this up in your Bible and read this. Paul is talking about this very process himself. He says, I know that I have been apprehended in the King James Version, I think it says, for something that is greater than I have ever been able to achieve. And he says, I realize that I haven't fully achieved it yet, but one thing I do, I forget what lies behind, and I press on toward this mark of my high calling. So you see, we're all called to live this full and meaningful life. And Jesus even came to save us so we can have the full and meaningful life. And the more we let go of some of these things that we've become, 
by, at the hand of other people. And the more we open up to who God made us to be, we will have a fuller and a richer life.